Today I would like to share and I'm going to be doing many many topics specifically on the greatness of the African Muslims. I think African Muslims do not know how much has been said about the greatness of the African Muslims and their contributions to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, in this regard, I will talk later. But what today I want to talk about is the link between Africa, Zulqarnain, and the end of times. First, I have to repeat some things I have said before. After mentioning those things in Ikhtisar, you can find my other videos where I go into more detail. But let me just start by when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the word Zulqarnain and when the Prophet was asked by the people of the book, the Jewish people, about Zulqarnain, then it should be obvious that there must be some information about Zulqarnain in their books. The Jews asked a question about someone they didn't know about or they wanted more information about. So, let me show you one of the parts of the Bible that mentions Zulqarnain. وَأَمَّا الْكَبَشْ As for the ox, الَّذِي رَأَيْتَهُ The one that I saw in my dream, ذَلْقَرْنَيْن This is in the book of Daniel, which is one of the books of the end of times in the Bible. And he's mentioned many times in the Bible, and even in this passage he's mentioned Zulqarnayn many times. فَهُوَ Maluk. So he is one of the kings, Madi wal Fadis, that brought together the two great empires of Madi and Fadis. This is Zulqarnain according to Israeliyat. This is Zulqarnain according to the Bible. Therefore, according to the Israeliyat. Now, when we usually think of this person, who was this person that brought together Madi and Fadis? in the bi biblical history. Who was this person? Well, anyone who has studied the Bible will tell you this person was none other than the great king Cyrus the Great. Cyrus the Great, if you look at his pictures, corresponds with the way he's described in the narrations and the athar of the Sahaba. Let me share with you this point. Okay. Over here, I just want to point to one of the riwayas <coughs> from Ibrahim ibn Ali ibn Abdullah ibn Ja'far. Kana aswada. He was a black man, meaning a black king. So Zulqarnain was black. Zulqarnain was black and he was black and so therefore if you look at the pictures of the so over here I want to mention the Bible Cyrus the Great is mentioned 23 times in the Bible okay and in the book of Isaiah Azra 2 Chronicles and Daniel all refer to him okay and so Cyrus the Great was the one who let the Jews, Bani Israel, go from Babylon to Israel so that they can do build the house of God in Israel. Okay, When you see this picture, let me show you this picture a little bit better. This is the picture of Darius, who is from the family of Cyrus the Great. Do you see something here? The narration says he was black, and when you look at their sculptures, you can see that they have the hair of the African people. They have the hair of the African people. Let me share with you also a picture of some of these. These were known as the black Persians. Iran, the word Iran where is Persia, Iran Today is the white Persia because Iran is from Aryan and as you know Aryan refers to the white race. But these were a people that came from Africa, this empire, 
that Cyrus the Great ruled and brought together the empires, but they spoke in a language that was, it was Semitic and it was Asi Asian and African. It was a combination of these languages, as I'll come to in a second. But these were known as the Black Persians. Okay. Uh, these were known as the Black Persians. And uh, let me now also show you, if I can, okay, if you look at the picture of Cyrus the Great on his grave, you also see his beard is the African beard, the type of hair the Africans have. Hopefully, I'll have a better picture than this. Okay, this you can also see from Darius. Um, so, who is Cyrus? Also, the language, keep in mind the Cyrus Cylinder, which is the first human rights declaration, was done by an African named, named Cyrus the Great who's mentioned in the Bible as Zulqarnain or Zulqarnain. He freed the slaves, declared that all people had the right to choose their own religion, established racial equality. These and other decrees were recorded on baked clay cylinder in the Akkadian language with cuneiform script. Okay, so just keep this in mind, Akkadian language. So, Old Persians, or the Black Persians, Cyrus the Great likely spoke Old Persian, a dialect of Persian originating in what is now southwest Iran. Old Persian became the administrative language of the empire he established. Okay? Now, <coughs> continuing here, let me share with you. Akkadian belongs to, with other Semitic. So, Semitic languages are which one? Arabic? Hebrew, uh, Aramaic, Chaldean, Syriac. These are all Semitic languages. So Zulkarnain spoke a Semitic language. A near eastern bunch of Afro-Ziatic, Afro-Asia languages. A family native to Middle East, Arabian Peninsula, Horn of Africa, parts of Anatolia, North Africa, Malta, Canary Islands, and parts of West Africa, the Hausa people, who are a great people of Islam, the Hausa people. So, you can then also see uh, that, uh, I will leave this for now, because, yeah. So now let me say what I want to really say. But before I say it, let me repeat the logical points. Now, there are two logical points. One is using language, and one is using Riwaya and history. Okay, so the Riwaya says from the family of the Prophet وسلم, that Zulqarnain was black. Sutul Kahf has to do with the end of times. Sutul Kahf mentions a black king. Why? Because the word Zulqarnain is used in the Riwaya as a black king in our tradition. And also accepted as a great king in the Bani Israeli tradition. This is muttafaqun alay in the sense this is an agreement on both sides. In our tradition, it's agreed he was black king. There are traditions that say he might have been an angel. There are other traditions that say he's a prophet. But the majority of our traditions say he was not a prophet. He was not an angel, but rather a king. And he was a king who had great victories. And you can read about the fact that uh, even over here, I have it. Let me just share it with you very quickly. The And it's hard for me to say this, but let's see. Let's try to see how I say this. Okay. The Achaemenid Empire. Okay. The Empire of the Kingdom was an ancient Iranian empire founded by Cyrus the Great in 550 BC. The first Persian Empire based in West Asia. It was the largest empire the world had ever seen at its time, spanning a total of 5.5 million square kilometers, okay, from the Balkans and Egypt in west, in the west to Central Asia and the Indus Valley in the east, meaning including Khorasan, that area. Okay, so uh, th this person, okay, uh, what is he known for in the world and in history? Okay, who we are calling the uh, Zulkarnain in the modern era has been recognized 
for its imposition of a successful model of centralized bureaucratic administration, its multicultural policy, building complex infrastructure, remember the wall, such as road systems and organized postal system, the use of official languages across its territories, the development of civil services, including its possession of a large professional army, its advancements inspired the implementation of similar styles of government by a variety of later empires, including the United States of America. Okay, so uh, this person mentioned in the Bible, Zalqarnayn, who the Jews asked the Prophet about, the Quran tells us about how he conquered the lands and his journeys that he took. And he was in the battlefield as a leader, not sitting in some palace and telling his army to fight. He was in the front lines himself, established justice himself, let the Jews, after he conquered Babylonia, he let the Jews go back to Israel. Now, what is my point of all of this? My point is that the Riwaya says he's black. The history record shows that the person that the Bible is referring to is also black people. And that the writing that they used, the Akkadian language, is also Afro-Asian centric. It's one of the Semitic languages. And so therefore, what is my point? My point, dear brothers and sisters, is that it may be in the end of times that Africa will be our secret. Africa may rise because when all the cities fall, when all the cities fall and there's chaos, who are a people, I can only think of two, who are a people who are already ready to live in a world without the modern facilities? The people of Khorasan and the people of Africa. And so therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Africa, you have a great role to play in the end of times. And great leadership will come out of Africa. Great leadership will come out of Africa. And so therefore, Muslims in Africa must get ready for the end of times and for the fall and the collapse of the global economy and the global system. It is inevitable. I'm seeing how fake it is every day. Anyway, this is what I wanted to share with you. And I leave you be. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.